This video is sponsored by Audible. May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and there have been many autobiographies from rock stars talking about their struggles with mental illness. One of the most revealing and honest rock star stories out there is Confess the Autobiography by Rob Halford of Judas Priest. And you can hear Rob Halford tell his own story on Audible. The Audible app makes it easy to listen anytime, anywhere, while traveling, working out, walking, doing chores, anything. As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from the entire catalog, including the latest bestsellers and new releases. Members also get full access to a growing selection of included audiobooks, Audible originals, and podcasts. You can download or stream included titles. New members can try it free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash get rocked or text get rocked to 500, 500 to try Audible free for 30 days. Completely risk free to try and even if you cancel you can still keep that free audiobook download. Link is in the video description to hear confessions of one of the greatest metal singers ever and his stories of his own mental health. Mental health is an issue that has become much more addressed in modern society. The times of just smile and stop complaining are fading away and addressing actual problems are here. Along with that, there have been many songs written in all genres of music addressing different areas of mental health and struggles. So this video is going to look at 10 rock songs about mental health. As May is Mental Health Awareness Month, it's a good time to show 10 examples of good songs that get different points across in various ways. I know there are way more than 10, but I felt like pointing out a few worth mentioning due to either the direct message, song quality, or people not knowing exactly what the message is in a famous song. This is not a top 10, no ranking, just a list. You know how these videos work, let's get to it. One of the dreamier, flowing alternative hits out of the 90s is definitely not so uplifting in meaning. Today comes from a much darker source than people realize as Billy Corgan made this song after a previous tour and feeling miserable with life. The Smashing Pumpkins knew how to write those feelings very well in the 90s. When you play the song on YouTube with closed captions on, it reads gentle, upbeat music in the beginning. That is perfectly juxtaposed to the intention of today as much of the Smashing Pumpkins 90s output was also. Billy Corgan said in an interview years ago, I was completely obsessed with destroying myself. It became my primary preoccupation. Out of the depths of that despair, I bottomed out and it literally came down to a simple decision. Either destroy yourself or get used to it, work, live, and be happy. So I wrote this song. As you can see, I chose another kind of death, which is rock and roll. You have to look beneath the surface of the gentle, upbeat music to really understand how much hurt someone is going through, and it's admirable when a decision is made to try and work and live. The key word being try. It can be difficult, but it's worth finding a way to treat today as the greatest day you've ever known. Continuing the theme of fun, upbeat sounding songs that are about serious problems, Green Day knows how to subvert expectations. Basket Case was one of the biggest songs in the 90s and was sung along with by adults and kids alike thinking it was fun. The meaning behind Basket Case is much less fun sounding. On an album like Dookie lies a song about anxiety and full panic attacks. Basket Case is written from Billy Joel Armstrong's perspective who at one point thought he was literally going insane. Armstrong was eventually diagnosed with panic disorder. The voice of Green Day said that at the time, the only way I can know what the hell was going on was to write a song about it. I think I'm cracking up. Am I just paranoid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes a lot more sense when you put it together as being sung by someone who anxiety and panic is ruining them. It's written in a speed and tone that make it work with loud volume and singing something horrifying out loud. These are terrible feelings and people sing the lyrics with joy. There is a lot more deeper material from Green Day than people would give credit and that went on for years after Basket Case and Dookie. First you have to get past the album title though in order to appreciate the serious nature of some songs. Linkin Park wrote many songs regarding struggles with personal issues and mental health over several albums and I am confident that Breaking the Habit was a massive song because so many people were able to relate. Knowing there is an ongoing problem and being fed up with it, Chester and Mike could get a point across. The struggle with both addiction and self-harm is represented in Breaking the Habit. It was actually Mike Shinoda who started composing the song and then wrote lyrics about Chester and his struggles which really hit Chester hard to the point that Bennington had trouble performing the song live for almost a year after Meteora was released. I wanted to talk about this Linkin Park song because of the main statement, I'm breaking the habit tonight. It's frustration, acknowledgement, and then commitment to change. That's important to focus on with mental health. Also wanted to point breaking the habit out because it's one of Linkin Park's best. While addiction and self-harm were two of the biggest intended topics for the song, it can relate to a variety of other issues regarding mental health. Also shows good writing ability when an intended meaning is clear, but it can also be related to other issues. Linkin Park did that well. 
On the occasions that the offspring would get a bit more serious, you can tell they really meant what they were portraying. Dexter Holland had an eye-opening experience with what was the subject for the kids aren't all right. Mental health issues can be caused by your surroundings and environments, even over time. Holland wrote the kids aren't all right after a visit back to the area he grew up in, Garden Grove, California, and all of the people he knew at the time when growing up with turned out to have never moved on and only deteriorated over the years. The lyrics tell many examples of just how bad some people turned out with the neighborhood in decay after he had moved on. I'm a firm believer that the people someone interacts with on a daily basis, whether you want to or not, has an impact on mental health. You can be the product of your surroundings. How can one little street swallow so many lives? Over time, if you can't get out of a bad situation, things can gradually get worse without you realizing it. This song comes from the perspective of seeing how the people you used to know have things so terrible and wonder how it got to such a bad point. It's important to understand a bad environment and try to move on. There have been many people over the past decade plus who have screamed along with the darker lyrics of Bring Me the Horizon. A long-running theme for the group has been inner demons and struggling through life. Drown off That's the Spirit is the call for help when you know how bad things are, but are unsure of who can help. This is a bigger issue that I think is not addressed enough in the situation of mental health. What do you do if you don't know where to go and don't know who can possibly help you in real life? Many people with mental health issues at one point probably do have a situation like this, and Drown puts a clear voice to that. Ollie Sykes and Jordan Fish have a way of making the music stand out with the bigger hooks and lyrics, and Drown opens up with that memorable line all the way to the chorus. Sometimes you have to hit the bottom before things get better, and it's not always easy to figure out who can possibly help you. The line, Don't Let Me Drown, is sung almost like a chant. Like I said, this is not the first Bring Me the Horizon track to tackle a topic like this, but when Drown was originally leaked in 2014 and it ushered in the next phase of the band, it showed that the meaning behind the music is still carried no matter what Bring Me the Horizon does. Jesse Leach of Killswitch Engage has been open over the years about his personal struggles and what he's tried to do in fighting them. When it comes to mental health, the song I Am Broken 2 was written directly for awareness of the issue. Not just his own personal experience, but the experiences in general. Jesse Leach has been a good figurehead in heavy music to represent the good fight for mental health. I Am Broken 2, by design, is supposed to be relatable. Jesse Leach wrote the song in hopes to inspire people to know they are not alone in their struggles and that there are people that can relate. In one of the quotes Leach gave when promoting the 2019 album, album atonement, when I was younger, I didn't have a language for it, and it didn't have people around me talking about it or bringing it to light by saying words like depression or anxiety or bipolar. It was not talked about. The song title and statement is now tattooed on his arm, and when the album came out in 2019, Killswitch Engage even promoted organizations like Hope for the Day to continue support. I Am Broken 2 is all about being open and honest. Leech has worked directly with Hope for the Day, so it's great to know the song is sincere in creation as well as writing and meaning. Garbage does not get enough credit for being such a force in the 90s and beyond, and that's a shame because this unique band has made strongly written music even after the 90s. Bleed Like Me is written from the perspective of desperately wanting attention for how much pain you are going through, especially self-inflicted pain. By 2005, awareness of teenage self-harm was more prevalent, and there was more of an outreach and support system to those suffering from it. Bleed Like Me gave a good look at one demographic with younger women who feel pressured to do so. Butch Vig said in an interview with ABC, whether in the form of actual self-injury or other types of harmful behavior, it addresses many forms of behavior including actual cutting, anorexia, alcohol abuse, and gender role confusion. In a dark but very true statement, we all bleed the same. That was a message that comes from Garbage, who has done a fantastic job through generations connecting with audiences and unspoken feelings. Shirley Manson's voice also helps sink in the deep resonance with the message, as this is a song that deserves much more credit for what it's accomplishing without the edge and shock value that other bands would try. Soundgarden definitely has a few examples of songs based around mental health, and Fell on Black Day seems to have resonated with many people since 1994's Super Unknown. With all we know about Chris Cornell now, along with the many things he kept secret, it's safe to say this is a voice worth hearing regarding mental health. Chris Cornell told artist Greg years ago that Fell on Black Days was about waking up and realizing you're in a dark period of your life. This song was specifically about how he felt as a teenager dealing with depression. That realization as a teenager knowing what was going on shows how in tune Cornell was with himself even at a young age. The lyrics in Fell on Black Days really show how dark it can become when you are desperate for a change. Even if that struggle was something Cornell had throughout his life at times, he got those thoughts across clearly. Hearing his vocals on the How Would I Know line just 
gets into your synapses and you scream along the second you hear it. Teenage years are rough, that's nothing new, but this is an age where we know some of the youth are going through much harder situations than ordinary adolescents would have. Chris Cornell and Soundgarden understood that much sooner than most. And you could have as heavy and chaotic in the industrial world Trent Reznor has become over the years, it was Hurts at the end of Downward Spiral that truly put a song to the man's breaking point and resolution to get better. After years of addiction and self-destruction, this was Trent Reznor realizing how bad things had become. The Downward Spiral is a wild concept album, but when you end with Trent Reznor understanding everything he has is now broken and ruined, it's eye-opening. Hurt has connected with many people in the darkest ways possible, and the song is relatable because of that. Trent Reznor at that time represented many people. In an old interview on Hurt, Reznor said, I was uneasy about putting it on the album because that song felt like I was saying I needed help. I wouldn't admit that to myself, but when I wrote it, it felt like I was sitting in a pile of rubble and there was a hint of regret and remorse. Hurt was the first inclination for me that I could use a hand here. Reznor is a creative genius as well as innovative, and what's interesting is that one of his most stripped down songs is the one that sinks the deepest. After so much hurt and regret, you know you need help. And for those who prefer the Johnny Cash version, I get it. A lot of the same lessons apply with his performance of Hurt as well. From one of the most difficult albums for Pink Floyd to write, the band made a tribute to former singer Sid Barrett and Shine On You Crazy Diamond. An amazing beginning and end to Wish You Were Here and as much of a dedication as it is a statement of trying to carry on after unfortunate circumstances. Wish You Were Here is one of my all-time favorite albums and a big part of it addresses how Pink Floyd had to move on after years of Sid Barrett destroying himself and how it was so hard to forget the feeling of missing someone as the band continued to rise. Wishing their friend was there to see all the success Pink Floyd had in the 70s but due to so much substance abuse on top of mental health, the band knew that it would never happen. Barrett became almost a stranger after a while due to so much damage being done. Shine On You Crazy Diamond is split into a bookend for this album, and in many ways it's intimidating to people not familiar with Pink Floyd. Instrumentally and thematically, it's brilliant, but the realization of knowing someone did too much damage to themselves and who cannot continue to be with them... That's a lot to experience. Along with the surprise visit by Barrett to the studio while Wish You Were Here was being recorded, which really opened the band's eyes as this being a farewell of sorts, Shine On You Crazy Diamond is as much of a tribute as it is a cautionary tale of how much damage a person can do to themselves when they are already vulnerable due to their own mental health. And before I go, if you are interested in the organization Hope for the Day, you can check out that link in the video description below as well as many others online and the resources there for mental health awareness. You do not have to be alone. And that was a look at 10 rock songs about mental health. Know of another? There are many more out there. Leave a comment and let everyone know. Big thanks to our patrons and YouTube members, and special thanks to Chris Doman and Dom Noble. You can have a say in upcoming videos, get weekly new music playlists, and see videos early by supporting Rocked on Patreon and through a YouTube membership. Click the join button below or the link in the video description to support the channel. Please subscribe and ring the bell to get notified of upcoming videos, and you can keep up to date with Rocked on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Also, I know there are a lot of bad songs about mental health, health issues out there, I wanted to focus on the good ones this time. Some of the bad songs about mental health? Yikes, they're rough.